Hello, my name is Freda and welcome to a little bit of an experimental series that I've been doing now on YouTube where I take a look at various mods, a short sort of surface level look, uh, mostly, uh, at various mods for Heartline 4. Now, however, I do have some experience playing this uh, mod. I do have a series running on this mod uh, at this point, and uh, I, so I have, like, some experience with what goes on in this mod. This mod is Führerreich, and Führerreich is a alternate history double blind in which basically uh, the mod is based on the alternate history world created by Winston Churchill or um, or a man whose name I actually forget now in the old lore uh, inside the alternate history world of Kaiserreich. So imagine, <clears throat> Kaiserreich by the way is also an alternate history world created in our world. So. Imagine in our world, someone created the world Kaiserreich, in which Germany wins World War One, right? Then, in that world, someone creates a alternate alternate history world, in which Germany loses World War One, and that is the world we're looking at right now. Führerreich, the legacy of the Great War. Now, first of all, I gotta say, like for presentation and stuff. Uh, the menu and stuff is cool. The uh, the logo is amazing. I'm not digging the um, like the background art just because it doesn't really scream like Führerreich compared to anything else. Uh, I mean, this is the American uh, or the U.S. Uh, Air Force uh, or sorry Navy uh, fighting the uh, Japanese Navy, but nothing here spe like specifically screams um, screams uh, Führerreich. And also the composition and whatnot is like kind of, I don't know, it's kind of flat uh, compared to something like the menus in um, in uh, Kaiserreich. Now, however, uh, let's uh, jump right into the game itself uh, so you can have a look at the various nations of this world. So since Germany uh, won World War One, oh sorry, yeah, Germany won World War One in Kaiserreich and then lost World War One in this one, you kind of need some background information on the old worlds to figure out why they decided to write this world as they did. For example, Charles Curtis is uh, president of the United States because he is a likely president in the Kaiserreich world. Vladimir Lenin is the leader of the Soviet Union and their symbol is different because they didn't see the Soviet Union actually win the first, um, or their, uh, their uh, revolution in 1917. Because in the Kaiserreich world, it lost. The Deutsche Reich, led by pseudo-fascist Adam Dressler, uh, named after the, I believe his name is Adam Draxler, the uh, founder of the uh, Nationalist uh, Socialist Deutsches Arbeiterpartie, uh, the uh, Nationalist Socialist uh, German Workers' Party, or Labour Party, um, aka the Nazi Party, uh, the French Republic, you got the Kingdom of Italy, Still under uh, Victor Emmanuel, or Victor uh, Emmanuel, United Kingdom, the George V, and Hirohito, Empire of Japan. We've got some um, highlight nations here, I believe, uh, because some of these might have been altered recently, but we're going to go to other countries, and we're going to have a look at most of them, I think. Actually, no, first of all, we need to read what happened with Adam Dressler. So, uh, he has this strange ideology called Valkism, which is uh, rooted in the Valkistische Deutsche Volkspartei, or Volkspartei, which is named after the German symbol that the German Valkists wear, the Valknut. It's an extreme nationalist and militaristic ideology that proposes a system where political power is centralized under a strong leadership. Does this sound familiar to anyone? Uh, that through the state controls and guides the nation to its national rebirth. Again, palingenetic rebirth, the essence of fascism, uh, at least according to Roger Griffin, who has written books on fascism, and uh, guides the nation to its national rebirth. Nonetheless, Valkists fundamentally defend the socially progressive ideals and the leader grants liberties to the people. Valkists are characterized by adopting conceptual and aesthetical aspects from ancient pag pagan, mystical, and esoterical traditions. So that's why they have the Valknut. See, a nation reborn, our great country was immeasurably humiliated at the tables of Versailles. So many lands that were predominantly German were handed away like unwanted pocket change. The Bremen Accord, which is the London Naval Treaty in this world. And we've got fervent revanchism because of the whole Versailles uh, thing. We've got similar stuff for each nation here. 
Uh, not uh, no ideas for um, for the United States though. France have some restoration of the monarchy, new legacy, and Air Force Navy cooperation. Divided military staff. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, foci that are highlighted. Uh, memories of the Somme and legacy of the Great War. We're gonna jump into the Deutsches Reich so that we can have a look at the map. One thing you probably are noticing is that while the map looks like sort of like a bizarro version of the vanilla Hot 4 map, uh, there are some significant changes. For example, France holds more territory than they did in um, in vanilla Hot 4. Not only do they hold As Alsace Lorraine, they hold the Saarland or the Sorland, believe it's Saarland. They hold uh, well, they don't actually hold this. This is something else. Um, <clears throat> There's a Spanish Civil War at the beginning of the game in this mod, between the Monarchists, Phalangists, which are National Populist and Falkist, the ideologists, we'll get to those in a moment. You've got Republicans, and you've got the, you know, Socialists, uh, quote-unquote. In Canada, things are different. You've got a Dominion of Newfoundland, you've got the Dominion of Canada under un the United Kingdom, and you can see, USA hold Baja California. China is a whole mess. Nationalist, uh, or the national government, under Chiang Kai-shek. Not that strange. But then you also have the Beijing government, under Wu Peifu. We've got Zhang Zhou-lin, and the Feng Shan government. you got the United Kingdom uh, directly administering Burma, and you've got a civil war going on in the British Raj. There's a lot of stuff like this. Uh, you see the uh, the Six Picord uh, agreement was actually honored in a way, and you've got, well, France holds a region here called, uh, uh, well, Phoenicia Frances, which I believe is like Phoenician France, which is uh, parts of Syria and stuff, Aleppo there and stuff like that, uh, Lebanon, and then you've got Palestine, which is uh, the Jewish protectorate. So the Jews have a state in this world before the uh, the war itself begins. Let me turn on the music. And, yeah, generally this, the world is just, like, kind of strange. The Republic of Norway, Socialist Republic under Arbeider Partia with Martin Tranmal. The king has been deposed. Anyways, let's uh, look at this stuff, because this is really interesting. You've got the uh, inter-allied Rhineland. So after the war, the Allied powers came together to establish a, um, like a, um, jointly administered Rhineland area. Kind of like what happened after World War II with uh, Western Germany being jointly administered by the Allies. So you see here the flag. And, uh, yeah, this is, th this part is very interesting to me, because that's something that you don't see in a lot of games, like that kind of, um, um, nation that isn't necessarily a nation. Kind of. Though they are directly a uh, a colony of uh, of France, however, oh yeah, and they are allied to France, Italy, and Albania, and all that stuff. Now, why isn't the United Kingdom in there, even though they're on this map or this flag? Well, the reason for that is that the alliances of this world are quite different. The Continental Entente does not actually include the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is part of the Imperial Protection Alliance, which uh, includes their colonies, and the Continental Entente is on its own uh, under France. There are ways in which they can become sort of intertwined and become, um, you know, allies again, but at the beginning of the game, this is the political situation. Germany, of course, leads the Stahlpact, the Steel Pact, which um, can bring in a bunch of Eastern European nations and various nations that fall to revolutions of uh, Falkism or national populism in the world. 
So let's have a look at the ideologies. The ideology system in this uh, mod is rooted in the ideology system of uh, Kaiserreich. So you have a lot of them. You've got Falkism, which is like the dominant new ideology of this uh, time. You've got national populism. Basically, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but um, the name sort of makes sense on the tin there. Paternal autocrats, authoritarian democrats, which is here the mo monarchist party with Wilhelm III. Uh, Centre Party, which is Social Conservative, Market Liberals, Social Liberals, Social Democrats. Then you have Libertarian Socialists. Uh, they're just called Libertarians here for short, but they are Libertarian Socialists. And then you have, which in this um, uh, this sense, they are the anti-Falkist Red, uh, like Red Struggle or Red um, Red um, um, Comfortbund is uh, is like. Uh, Oh, it's, it's hard to uh, translate because I'm not fluent in German uh, at, by any measure, but um, I believe it is like a, like a, yeah, a, a, um, a band of like people who struggle for a common struggle. And uh, yeah, so they're basically like an anti-fascist organization, I suppose. And then you've got the Deutsche Kommunistische Partei, uh, socialists. And then you've got the uh, Internationale Kommunisten Deutschlands, which is national collectivist, which is kind of like a more Stalinist socialist uh faction. You see, these guys, they are socialists, but you also have the National Collectivists as a uh, a minority party there. You've got the Czech state instead of Czechia, or the Czech Republic or anything, anything, anything like that, and you don't have Czechoslovakia, because Slovakia is its own thing. Over here. In terms of focus trees, the focus trees of this mod are pretty, pretty big. At least the German one is pretty big. It's very interesting as well. It has a lot of cool, um, like, paths and stuff. Some of them are not as cool. Like, for example, Germany here with the direction of the economy, they can either go down a path where they have a lot of foreign policy stuff, or they have a lot of internal policy. The foreign policy stuff, I don't really find that interesting, because all it does is you, you get, get, like, factories and stuff, and you get um, better trade deals and stuff like that. Uh, While well, this stuff is more like, I don't know, rooted in the ideological conflicts in the country, with Otto Strasse, who was um, uh, purged from the uh, Nazi party for being a bit too left leaning, I, I suppose. Yeah, otherwise, uh, most of these are kind of like your standard. Um, standard focus trees like that. However, uh, what this mod does, which I haven't seen a lot of other mods do, is have a lot of decisions that actually uh, have, well, in the focus tree as well, um, that have um, drawbacks. So a lot of these decisions have drawbacks and stuff, and so does the focus tree. For example, if you go down, I believe, the, um, the German antitrust laws, you get a bunch of stability and political power, but you also get a malice to your production efficiency gap as Production efficiency is hampered by the fact that it cannot exploit the workers as much, or exploit the, the populace. And uh, you can see that same thing in raise the taxes here, on high earners, which also lowers construction speed, and uh, uh, consumer goods factories. You have like trade-offs like that, which I suppose will pay off, or at least might be situationally uh, appropriate. Which is something I don't see a lot of focus trees do. Most mod focus trees tend to be straight up, you know, you get something and then you keep getting something and you, you know, stuff like that. And I think that is very interesting. It's also Turkey, well, Ottoman Empire was uh, divvied up and lands were given to Greece and Italy administers southern Turkey because uh, Italy wants the Mediterranean to itself. In terms of uh, research and uh, tech trees, what I've noticed is that, at least for the Germans, uh, the icons for a lot of the tanks and that has have been replaced to give some high, like high um, uh, res and very beautiful icons for everything. For example, the A7V here, beautiful camo, uh, and all that. So that's very much appreciated. Uh, Germany, of course, is a very, very central figure in this mod, so they have been given a bit more love than some of the other nations. Um, the airplanes are vanilla, though some names are changed because of the whole um, alternate history thing. 
Point Hilda instead of the mouse here and stuff like that. Because of, of their, you know, fetishization of uh, pagan and, you know, pre, um, uh, pre, like, high Middle Ages culture and stuff. Otherwise, most of the tech is pretty much the same. Uh, while being based off of Kaiserreich, it does not include uh, Kaiserreich's strange um, naval system. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Um, while there are a bunch of like unique ministers and stuff, and uh, none of that is like particularly unique to this mod. Most mods have something like that. But this mod is actually very, very fully featured, and very, very well fleshed out, and very, very interesting. I really, really like the uh, the world. I kind of think some of the ways the mod creators express some of the stuff that they, I believe, want to express is kind of stilted and strange. Like, for example, with the uh, Falkists, like how they uh, propose uh, that they are, uh, like they, they, you know, they deport uh, non-German peoples based on their culture, because the non-German peoples are not able to assimilate into the Valkist German culture. Um, however, the mod also says that uh, the Valkist ideology is also strictly anti-racist. And while I think the deportation of someone based on their culture and the idea that you are, you know, anti... Well, they're at least anti-racial science, of course, uh, but also the idea that they are not racist... Uh, at the same time, it's kind of like at odds for me. I believe there is something that the mod creator is trying to express, but it isn't coming out very clearly. Or mod creators. Stuff like that. Um, which is going to get refined down the line as the mod keeps getting worked on. Uh, is basically the only stuff that I've noticed that I have any qualms with. Other than that, the mod is freaking awesome. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, this mod, or I didn't want this video to be too long, so uh, without further ado, I want to say thank you so much for watching the video. Also, if you're interested, you can check out some of my social media stuff in the description down below. Twitter, Twitch, uh, Patreon if you want to support me, and also Discord. We have a Discord community. And uh, you can also check out my other series. I have a Führerreich series running as the Germans uh, on this channel. You should see like a thing you can click on at the end of the video. Uh, to go directly to that. And that is about it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye.